Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Short Explanations Podcast. My name is Hayam. Tom is there. There, there. This is episode 10. We are going to talk secure messengers. And before we start, we'll just say that we want to keep it uh, short. We can go on for hours and hours on this. So so we're going to try and keep it right to our 30-minute-ish time. And if we have to do another show, we're going to do that. Or if you have questions, we'll wait on those. We'll do everything. So first, I'm going to ask Tom, what is a secure messenger? All right, I'm going to cut to the chase. Um, if you've heard this talk before, use Signal. Cool, think, that was our show. Thank you. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> you, use Signal. And, and, and by the way, sponsored by our Signal group. We have our own Signal group. It is free. Message us, find us on whatever. You can email the show, and that's at the bottom of every post, and you can just join us there. That's the show. But no, in reality... In reality, we want to send messages that no one can read. And I think before we get to what no one can read, I think we need to have a discussion on what is your threat model? Who are you hiding from? Do uh, you want to take that, Tom? Yeah. So yeah. You know, your your threat model is going to vary greatly depending on what you're doing, what you're talking about, who you're talking to, in what context. Uh, like, let's say that you are a government official in several areas of the world, uh, there can be transparency regulations that say when you communicate official business to other members of the government, it has to be in something that's archived that you can look up. So your threat model and kind of your responsibility model is going to be different than somebody sharing their barley soup recipe, right? Or if you are communicating top secret information, like, you know, giving a, a, the bank login password to your spouse, uh, you know, something that Sure, it might not be like nuke codes or anything crazy like that, but it is important enough that you want to keep it private and maybe don't want to have scroll back history with that password just hanging out in your messages app. So in every group that I'm in, in every social circle that I'm in, I always find the one Israeli who is in the army who, and I always joke around that my Mossad agent is watching me. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's a bad thing. I don't know. But it seems to be in every group that I'm in. But in reality, are you hide who are you hiding from? Are you hiding from your neighbor? Like your neighbor. Remember the show in Bewitched? The, the neighbor had the binoculars looking at uh, Samantha, who was the witch in the show. Or are you hiding from a three-letter agency? And the problem is, if you're hiding from a three-letter agency, we're going to do our best. But this is not the show for you. No. Um, no. Okay. Uh, yeah. If you're hiding from a three letter agency, we're, we're still telling you to use signal and that's probably your best bet. But from there, wh who are you hiding from? Or what are you, what is your goal at the end of the day? So when we talk about threat models and we will use this idea late over and over and through all the rest of the shows, think about that. Is it your crazy neighbor or is it the government or somebody with unlimited funds or someone who actively wants to go after you? Or is it someone in between that's just kind of boring and maybe not malicious, but you don't want to get snooped on, right? Like, I do, are you gossiping about work stuff to your coworkers in a signal group? Then, yeah, you probably don't want your company, you know, reading all that stuff, talking about your boss and, you know, how dumb they are for their proposal or whatever, right? Um, so stuff that's not like super critical but it doesn't need to be public and you know a little extra security is going to make you feel good um I, signals perfect for that but yeah i i do like what you said if a government agency is trying to nail you for some kind of crime or traced you down or whatever um good luck uh but you know you probably need way better experts than us too um <laughs> so yeah <laughs> Let me ask you, we don't, we didn't nail down a definition before we started. If you had mm -hmm. to say, if you had to say, if you're looking at a secure messenger, this is what you need. Is there like a top three, a top five, like features yeah. that we need? I, so, I think a good, a good top three, you know, first off, always end-to-end -end encryption, right? And by end-to-end -end encryption, let's, let's define that a little bit because a lot of people, uh, a lot of companies will say end-to-end -end encryption when they really mean HTTPS. They really mean encryption in transit. Uh, but end-to-end -end is a really specific definition of how that data is handled in transit and more importantly, after transit, 
right, in storage. So if a company can look in their database or, uh, you know, a, a, in whatever storage platform they're using to hold your messages, either before sending it to somebody or even afterwards for like scroll back history and stuff like that, if that company at any point can read the plain text of that message, it is not end-to-end -end encrypted. End-to-end -end encrypted means it is encrypted on your device, like on your phone. And when you hit send, the only thing you're sending is the encrypted cipher text of that message to a recipient, who then, using their keys through a novel key exchange algorithm that several of these encrypted messengers have, um, that recipient or recipients can then unlock the message and view the plain text. But anyone in the middle of that chain, including the company who's facilitating that handoff, does not have your keys and has no ability to unwrap and view that message. If that's a good one, I would do a second one of either mass adoption like everyone has it. You want you want a messenger that everyone has so you can find other people. It's not like this one person because getting people to adopt your secure messenger is probably is really hard. So you want something that is that is like either updated, well taken care of, has mass market. And I will give you the third one that is audited and we have actual evidence that it is secure. So saying one is secure, having a white paper that says it's secure is great and that's the first step. But the 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 question marks there is what happens when when the government starts tightening screws and in some of these we have answers and some of these we don't exactly so yeah. you know to to absolutely cut to the chase on this one uh signal you know it, this is a very popular story from a while ago but signal got a subpoena by a government uh, and they said, give us everything you have on this particular user. We know they were using Signal. They have an account with you. Um, and the Signal Foundation did provide every piece of data they had on that subscriber, which was two pieces of information. One is a timestamp of when their account was created. And two is a timestamp of the last time their device talked to the Signal servers. Two points in time. That is literally the amount of data that Signal has on you. And when a government said, give us everything, that's what they could give. They don't store messages. They don't store metadata. They don't store your contacts. They don't store your social graph. Uh, they literally just have those two timestamps. So a government asking Signal for information will get them nothing. And that that is the highest badge of honor that we could bestow upon any <laughs> secure messenger. Okay, well, we're going to save Signal to the end. Let's go through, we have a whole list here of the big popular ones that you've all heard of. Uh, I, for whatever reason, I put WhatsApp first. Probably the, the second most uh, used uh, chat platform behind, I guess, WeChat because a billion people in China use it, which is also on the list, but I, I'm going to just cross it off. It is not secure, so that's out. So WhatsApp was founded by two guys way back when. Facebook paid a 20 billion dollars for them like an obscene amount of money and one of the things that they said when they left or when they merged is that we want security and they went to the point that they contacted the signal group open whisper systems and they got the signal protocol installed into the message so messages from one to the other from point a to point b are 100 secure the thing that's not is the metadata it's who you are the people in the group the names of the groups and they can use anything they want there and that throws up not necessarily like the worst red flag but it's it's your threat model needs to be is need, just needs to be i don't want my neighbor snooping on me or the kid with the what's the the raspberry the not the raspberry pi the wi-fi pineapple sniffing traffic yeah i i do love uh, that WhatsApp included end-to-end -end encryption in their main messaging platform. Like, that is outstanding. It's fantastic work. And it, quite literally overnight, every single one of their users was more secure at the end of this. And that is to be absolutely praised. The unfortunate part is that you're exactly right. Your threat model now has to include, yeah, I guess I trust Facebook to know who I'm talking to and when. Uh, because that metadata, yeah, there's a reason that Facebook bought WhatsApp, right? They didn't do it out of the goodness of their hearts. Uh, they did it to obtain a graph of social connections and use that to further their own interests. 
Uh, it's I, I'm not going to call it necessarily nefarious, um, but it is something that you have to keep in mind. If your threat model is I can't have anyone, including any company, understanding who I'm talking to and when, not necessarily the what, because the message content is still encrypted. I can't get to it. But they definitely know who you're talking to and when those messages are being sent. That's something you have to keep in mind. Now, another good and bad. Let's start with the good. Everything is encrypted. Well, anything non-business is encrypted. And for Americans, that's almost everything. Uh, I, I know other foreign countries, people use WhatsApp for literally everything else, even chatting with business and customer support. But in America, uh, what's point A to point B user to user messages are encrypted by default. There's no like secret mode or whatever else. But yes, your the name of your group, the people are in there and they can they can use those names and track you all over the internet with that is the problem. But the so if you're if you're sending funny memes of whatever, go for it. That 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 is fine. You want to have a family group? Obviously, move them to Signal, but I understand the inertia of not being able to do it. WhatsApp is fine because they have the same last name as you. Like, it, they're, they don't need Facebook to tell you who, who's in your family. And speaking of Facebook, uh, Facebook Messenger does have a secret mode, has a private messages mode. Uh, and I, I believe, and I apologize, I don't have a Facebook account, so I, I can't yeah, verify I can the that. usage of this. Uh, but uh, I, if I remember correctly, it's one-on-one -on -one messages, just direct messages in private mode, will still use that signal protocol uh, to make sure that the content of the message is encrypted. Same issue that WhatsApp has, which is your social graph, the who you're talking to and when you're talking to them is still very much available to Facebook. Uh, but the contents of the messages are end-to-end -end encrypted. Did, did I get that right? Yes. The only problem is is that so if you want to use Signal private message mode, it has to be on one device to another singular device. Mm. So if you're using Facebook on your desktop, you don't get that, that, that private mode. It can only be on your phone. And again, you have to toggle it on. And, and that means everyone has to be on board with that. And one of those requirements is I want to have messages everywhere. And if it's just on my phone and my iPad or it's, I want to have it everywhere in some way. And that doesn't do it, but Facebook does have that private mode and you can set it up and it does work. And again, it is the signal protocol. Um, our favorite, I had a big favorite. I was a big Threema fan for a huge, like I am still a big Threema fan. They just recently had an issue that they weren't exactly clear on. But the one thing we really liked about Threema was it didn't use your phone number. So all of these use your phone number. And if your threat model is your phone number is an issue, Threema was the username type thing. And the cool part is it had three dots. It had red, like we we can't verify anything about this person. It had orange uh, two dots that, hey, we, we noticed they're in your contacts or some social circle, really your contacts. And three, you did the actual exchange of keys. The problem is they were audited. So they're, they're a Swiss company. So they actually don't have anybody spying on them and they're secure in that way. But their, their audit came back with some like weird things that they're probably going to fix. But the other problem is it's, it's a paid app. You have to get people to pay $4. I mean, it's cheap. It's $4 or something, but you need everyone to do it. And that's not unfortunately going to happen. Yeah, that's, that's really Threema's main downfall is that it's just not popular. You know, I like other than us and in, in a random handful of others, I'm thinking less than five people. I, I don't know if I've ever met another Threema user in the wild. I mean, the app was really slick. It was beautiful. We liked it. They actually have a desktop thing now. But like you said, it's I have it for Android. Am I going to spend another $4 to buy it for iOS? And then it was not really. I don't want to. Like when you said, there's five people. And like we said, one of the requirements, it has to have a good adoption. Yeah. So one thing that does have a, a pretty good adoption uh, amongst Apple device users is iMessage. And there actually is some new information here that you might not be aware of. Um, so iMessage, if you have iCloud backups turned on uh, and you're using the 
standard data protection. You haven't done advanced data protection, which we'll get into in a bit. Uh, basically, what it means is that when you take an iCloud backup, when iCloud or your your iOS devices automatically back themselves up to iCloud, um, your messages and the keys to unlock those messages are handed to Apple. Um, now, the good part about this is, hey, if uh, you lose your password, then Apple can absolutely recover all your data and you just, you know, slurp down that backup from iCloud, uh, it unpacks it, and all your stuff flows back to your devices. It's it's really cool. It's a slick system, and it makes it very easy for people to, you know, recover from lost passwords. The downside is that Apple holds all your keys. Uh, so they can and have uh, given into, I mean, given into is probably a little too harsh. They were compelled by the government to hand over iCloud backups in many cases, uh, probably several of which we don't and won't ever know about. Um, but if you have iCloud backup turned off, um, Apple actually does a, a thing where they will regenerate the iMessage keys on your devices, and that is never sent to Apple. So if you have iCloud backup turned off, um, even on the standard iCloud data protection, um, what that means is that your messages in iMessage are end-to-end -end encrypted fully on your device. Apple never touches that. Uh, but if you want backups and end-to-end -end encryption, uh, there's now a new feature that Apple just recently launched, Advanced Data Protection, uh, which makes you jump through some hoops. You have to create recovery keys or set up a recovery contact, um, and it will end-to-end -end encrypt almost everything. And I say almost because there's a couple things that they can't really end-to-end -end encrypt. So like, if you have a, a, a mail account, you can't really end and encrypt everything in there because the global email system has to function with every other email system on the planet. Same with like calendar and CalDAV and contacts and stuff like that. But for iMessages and a bunch of other things on your iOS devices, all of that data is end end encrypted. Um, now, with this, it comes the risk of if you lose your password, if you can't log in and you don't have those recovery keys, that data is as good as dead. You cannot access it. There's no way to break into it. Apple has no power to help you. Uh, but it also means that iMessage, even with iCloud backups, is now fully end-to-end -end encrypted. And the only person with those credentials to unlock and, and decrypt those messages is you. Or it's somebody who has your device who's you know, sufficiently able to get into your phone. So... Somebody, somebody was telling me about iCloud backup. And so I left it on. I left iCloud backup on. And I keep on saying, well, I want my messages across all my devices. And he told me, no, that's not what iCloud does. So iCloud does, so what iMessage does is it sends the message to all your devices. So if you have five devices, it will send that message to all five of them. And you read it where you where you read it. So if you turn iCloud, uh, if you turn iCloud off on specifically the messages, Apple doesn't have it, and you still get them across your device. I have not had any like real syncing issues. I'm sure if I sent a bunch of messages in a row, it took a second on this device or that device. But I haven't I haven't seen any sort of of jittering with that. So I am happy with iMessage turned off. The one thing iMessage does not have is um timed messages. So you cannot delete your messages. I have a feeling that's coming, but as of right now, you cannot say leave this uh delete the message after X number of units of time. And that's a feature that may or may not be important to you. Uh, I know we personally use it to, like, send passwords, right? For the short explanations Twitter account, for instance. So we can both have it in our password managers. Uh, so, you know, we enable disappearing messages. We send the credentials. We disable disappearing messages. And then, you know, after an hour or so, after we've had enough time to copy and paste into our respective password managers, um, then the message just vanishes. And that's really mostly for scroll back protection. Like I'm not concerned that uh, signal or somebody's going to break into my phone or anything like that. It's really just so if you grab the, the device and you scroll through it, you don't see a password. Um, that's, that's it. And if it makes me feel good. Yeah. If that's not part of your threat model, if that's not part of your use case, if you're never going to use a messenger like that, you don't need that feature. 
it's just kind of a nice to have. Okay, we got two more. We have RCS, which is not really a messaging system. RCS rich community stands for rich communication service. It was, it wasn't even a company, but Google took the project on and they wanted, to, they wanted to stop the problem with, with SMS that, that iMessage did and all these others. SMS is just really bad. So SMS or text messaging, as you know, it is completely out in the open. It is, it is limited to 140 characters. It still is. And if anybody can just go down to your carrier and just request it. So there's no security there. They wanted to add all the cool features that WhatsApp and iMessage and Facebook Messenger has. So they started doing it. And one of the things that they said is we want encryption on it. Here's the problem. Everybody has to have an RCS enabled device which is almost all of them except for Apple, at least in the United States. It's everyone except for Apple. Across the, the rest of the world, there's probably just a handful, but the big, the, the big issue in the room is Apple is not there. So RCS is good. Again, if you're, if you're not doing anything and you're just sending messages, you're not the, you're not, you don't have to worry about, let's say, your carrier uh, spying on you. That, that's about it with that. Yeah, the the issue I have with RCS and other fallback enabled apps um, is that RCS largely takes the form of being the messaging app on an Android device, on a newer Android device. Um, and the, R the messaging app will also do SMS. So unless you're paying attention and, and granted it's pretty obvious there's like a different background color for sms versus rcs messages only rcs messages can be encrypted sms does not have that um but it, you can get into a situation where you go to a fallback mode and you're sending sms messages to people and unless you're really paying attention about what you're sending and you know making sure that the lock is in the header of uh, the title of the group or the title of the message and then you know you've got the lock on the send button like unless you're paying attention to those things you can end up in a situation where you accidentally use the app in an insecure way without really needing to turn anything off or make a choice. Uh, whereas opposed to uh, Signal, WhatsApp, iMessage, um, you know, there, there's well, a iMessage very... Has, iMessage has that fallback bug. That's I true. Know this. You have the, the iCloud, or uh, they do have SMS mode too. Yes, it um, will fall back if you're in bad service. So anyway, but continue. All the others are just are just communication, are just communication. iMessage actually does have an SMS fallback because I'm always in a place that has no service. Yeah. So with something like Signal or WhatsApp or, or even Threema, there's not really a way to use those apps insecurely. Um, there's, there's not really a way for a user to accidentally do the wrong thing. Um, Signal back in the day did have SMS support, um, and it was pretty controversial, uh, pretty controversial for them to remove it. Uh, but honestly, it kind of makes its use case a lot more clear. Having that SMS fallback in Signal always kind of muddied the waters because the messages weren't protected. They were just going over SMS, but it showed up in the same UI as all of your secure messages. And granted, like there was some differentiation there, but it just, it didn't feel great to know that there was always this pitfall that you could randomly stumble into if you weren't careful. We'll just say before we get the signal, Telegram is bad. Don't use it ever. Yeah. Um, that's a political statement. Mm -hmm. You can tell me I'm wrong. It's okay. Um, Telegram was founded by two, I think, MIT people. They rolled their own encryption, which we know is just really bad to do. They have a bounty. If you can break the encryption, you can get a boatload of money. But very simply, if you're a three-letter agency and you broke the encryption, a hundred thousand, two hundred and fifty thousand, a million dollars is not worth it to you. Uh, Telegram and group chat is not encrypted. That is there. It, it's encrypted in the way that they think it is in one-to-one -one mode. And as of right now, no one has publicly broken the encryption. Whatever that means, no one right now, as of this moment, has broken the encryption. But like I said, it's they, they do their own private audits. It's not open source. It's, it's strange. So if you want to use Telegram because it has a lot of cool features, more power to you. You want 
uh, all your friends in in whatever country use it, just understand that is not as encrypted as you think. Yep. Uh, finally, we got a bunch of minutes. Let's talk Signal. So, so I was on Signal when it was called Text. Me- uh, do you remember the first name of it? Red Secure. Text. Tech secure, Tech secure, Red Secure. Doesn't Red okay. Secure a different thing? I don't. I think it's the same thing. But Signal has nailed, has done everything right. Uh, the everything that we can talk about, okay, is is absolutely right to the point that I think it's taken over for for encrypted emails and anything else. If you want to send it has anything you want through Signal, it is it. So Moxie Marlin Spike, clearly that's not his real name, but that's the name he goes by, created it. And and he, they they made it open source. You can build it from your from you know that you have it. They're not in the business of making money. They're a, a legitimate uh, American non uh charity, 501c3. So they take no ads and their job is to make sure it is as bulletproof as can be and so far all the audits everything has shown that it is and i i think this is actually one of our first uh anti sponsorships for this show because yeah. we both give money to the signal foundation for a completely free yeah. application uh so we're advertising it and we're paying money to them I use my Google rewards money where they track my location. And as they give me $2, I just forward it to signal. So <laughs> if, they, if Google steals my data, I just send it right back. It's the privacy cost offset. Yeah. Um, it's like but, carbon credits, but for data yeah. privacy. Well, it's, it's, they've done everything right. Uh, the only, only thing that people, there's two things that people have criticized. When one person signs up for Signal, it messages all your contacts that this person signed up. That is purely a marketing thing to show that they're getting there. And I think at this point, I don't want to say that they're there yet, but every time WhatsApp does some sort of privacy diminishing thing, more people hop on Signal. When when you hear some some whatever political whirlwind, more people jump on Signal. Anytime there's bad press about when it gets when it gets to this when it gets to the eleven o'clock news, more people jump on Signal. So if you actually download Signal now, you will see a whole bunch of your friends already there. And the key that we want to say is whether you use any of these other ones, more people using Signal, and Tom said this before, means more people in that haystack that just muddy the water of what's legitimate traffic, or what your as you called it your barley recipe. Yeah. So like. It- a lot of people will say, well, I just don't have anything to hide. And that's not true. Everybody has something to hide. Everybody has a lot of things to hide. Some things aren't like uh, weird secrets or anything. Some things are just private and that's perfectly fine. Um, But uh, keep in mind that uh, security and privacy is all about needles hidden in haystacks, right? Uh, and for the people who really need Signal to, you know, talk about who they are or what they believe in and places where they might not be safe to do those things, you know, those are the needles in the haystack. Those those are the people that need this protection the most. Um, and us, you know, just other people who are privileged enough to not need that kind of protection, uh, we can help them out by making that that data haystack even bigger, uh, right? And that's that's not to say that a signal or a government entity is watching all of those mess- messages, right? We've already clarified that they can't. They're not going to get any data from it, and signal doesn't have any data to give them. But um, when it comes to signals users, if it was only used by, you know, the people who absolutely needed that protection the most, well, clearly somebody who has signal on their phone has something to hide, which isn't the case if we make that haystack bigger. So when we trade around our barley soup recipes on signal, we're actually helping that signal to noise ratio grow increasingly in the favor of people's privacy. And that's a good enough reason for me to use it. I mean, it's if you're using iMessage for everything, but you have one conversation with somebody else that com- and, and you segregate them out, that one conversation is the important one. That's the one I want to see. But if you're using Signal for literally everything, then then 
we don't know which is an important conversation, which is not an important conversation, and that matters. If you use Signal for everything, if you use encrypted HTTPS on your internet for everything, you use all these things all aggregated together, your privacy becomes much more stronger. So is Signal beautiful? No, it is not as good as the others. It is perfectly functional. It has stickers. It has emoji. It has group chats. Okay, it's got just gifts. like it has gifts. It has it has admin used group chats, which was an issue. It has a desktop downloadable app, which is a royal pain, but it has to have it. Um, Signal sometimes does some weird things where if you like switch phones and you do it wrong, it sometimes becomes a problem, but that's because the security model dictates that that's what it has to do. So people usually get annoyed by some weird feature, but it has to do that. I mean, there was a controversy and this doesn't apply to us, but um, the Baidu keyboard is the number one keyboard in uh, China because I don't know, that's the one that people use. And Signal has a thing about copying keyboard characters. And there was a whole thing of, should it allow this keyboard or should it not allow this keyboard? But that's the level of granularity that they're thinking about. They're thinking about what happens if. And, and like we said before, we give them money because they're not storing anything. They can't sell ads against us. They can't do anything. So they're building a product and they're saying, hey, we need money. And they're looking at the legislation of what's happening if a country wants to break encryption. They've flat out said, we won't work in that country. It's We are not going to break what we stand for to move on. And I think with all that said, all the audits, all everything, if you need that absolute security that any that three-letter agencies allegedly cannot break, we don't know. But this is the best that we have so far. I think that's, that's perfect. I, I think that's the perfect way to sum it up. I have nothing yeah. to add. No notes. Okay. So with that said, we do have a signal group. You can come and join it and you can ask us. And people say, well, why don't you have this other group? Because we're a security podcast. I mean, we're we're practicing what we preach. Join our signal group. Uh if you want to know if you we missed the messenger, message us, do that. We wanted to keep it short and sweet, hit the big ones and go from there. So with that said, I think we're done. Let's have a good night. And we ended on that. Sounds good. See you all later.